Hello and happy Black History Month, Fort Washington Church. I'm David Ford, Fort Washington's business manager, and this is my take on my African heritage. I have a diverse mixture of heritages and ethnicities in my family. The family clusters I grew up in are small, but extend across two continents. If you look superficially, the variety of physical appearances across the branches of my family seem striking. I have first cousins in the Washington, D.C., Virginia area with a variety of skin tones and kinky hair, and first cousins in the Netherlands with hazel green eyes and straight, sandy blonde hair. But what's really interesting is the variety of cultural influences and experiences we each have. My history started with my father, Norman, who was the middle of three sons born in Washington, D.C. during the 1930s to Jesse and Faye Ford. Jesse was born in Leesville, Louisiana, a little town of an African-American father and a Cherokee Nation mother. And he earned a degree in agriculture from Louisiana's Southern University and A&M College. In Washington, D.C., he worked as a supervisor of geography at the Census Bureau. Faye was born in Little Rock, Arkansas, and was one of the very few black women at the time who earned a graduate degree in math at Fisk University and Hampton Institute. She worked at the Bureau of Engraving and Printing in D.C. Unfortunately for the family, Faye died during childbirth when my father was nine, and Jesse suffered a fatal heart attack six years later. An aunt in D.C. cared for the three boys, and they also spent some years living in rural Louisiana in a shack with my paternal, with their paternal grandmother. The three brothers basically had to look out for each other. Later, for me, no Ford family gathering was complete without hearing stories of their crazy childhood adventures. My father Norman left Howard University just a semester shy of a mechanical engineering degree to serve in the U.S. Army. He was a supervisor and trainer in the communications area. He earned a position located in the White House based on his performance on a competitive exam. It was the early 1960s, and his supervising officer had to explain to him that a Negro wouldn't be allowed to fill that professional position in such a high-profile office. So, my father's spot was given to the white person with the next best test score. In his later years, my father occasionally expressed anger about the continued existence of racism in American life. But in my everyday life, growing up, I almost never saw or heard him express bitterness, and he never adopted a victim mentality towards life's challenges. Throughout his adult professional and personal life, he participated and was a leader in a variety of activities with all kinds of people. On the third Sunday of February 2021, my father passed away after a years-long battle with cancer. He survived a lot of difficult challenges in his life with courage and grace. My mother, Karen, was born in the Netherlands, 1938, the oldest of four children from the union of a colored Surinamese mother and a white Dutch father. My mother's parents' lineage includes a mixture of African slaves, Portuguese Jews, and white Dutchmen. All of this in the smallest country in South America. After millennia of Arawak and Carib history, Suriname experienced colonization and sugar plantation slavery under the British and Dutch from the mid-17th century on. Suriname finally got its independence from the Netherlands in 1975. My maternal grandmother, Oma in Dutch, was Helia de Miranda. She was from a middle-class educated family that lived in a large house designed by my mo Oma's mother in the Surinamese capital of Paramaribo. My Oma married when she was very young, though. I never met my white Dutch grandfather, an accomplished civil engineer who traveled internationally to work on major projects. He deserted his family, leaving my Oma to raise their four children alone rarely visiting or sending financial support. My mother, her sister, and her two brothers relied on my Oma's courage and resourcefulness to survive, sharing clothes and rationing food and other necessities during the Nazi occupation of the Netherlands. 
Karen and Norman, my parents, met through family friends in Verona, Italy in 1962. She had left the Netherlands to get her college degree, and he was stationed in the U.S. Army in northern Italy. They were married in Italy by the end of 1963. My younger sister, Miranda, and I were born and grew up in the mid-60s, after my parents settled in New Jersey, and later moved us to New York City in the mid-70s. During summer vacations, we often visited my mother's family in Italy and in the Netherlands, and during holidays, we would go south to visit my father's family. Fast forward to the early 90s, I married Megan Henriquez, who was born in Haiti of Haitian and Dominican parents, and who has a large extended family. The next generation, our children, Camera and Julian, both now in their 20s, are inheriting and building their African heritages. They have grown up with an even more diverse family tree, with new branches contributing Lebanese, African American, Italian, South Korean, and more Jewish and Caribbean ethnic heritages over the last two decades. Joys and pains, deeply rooted traditions and unhealthy patterns of behavior, all coexist in my African heritage. I strive to see the challenges as learning opportunities. My family experience is not easily categorized. I've learned to live in liminal spaces, developing my identity without settling squarely in any one box. I'm grateful for it all. My prayer for our human race is that we each have respect, acceptance, and understanding for all our brothers and sisters. Justice and peace be with you.